Welcome to week five of 40 days. So let's dive in, shall we? Have you ever noticed if you spend enough time with someone, you can pick up on their habits and idiosyncrasies? They rub off on you and you rub off on them. Being in a close relationship with someone changes both parties. The best example I have of this is how Luke and I have influenced each other over our two years of marriage, and for the better, I might add. But it's the same with friends, it's the same with family, it's the same with work colleagues and church families. We are influenced by those that we spend time with, and we in turn influence them. So how, do, how does spending time with God in communion, worship, prayer, and meditation on his word change us? You've just read Exodus, thank you, where Moses has gone up Mount Sinai and the Lord has come down to meet him halfway, and Moses has received the written law. Moses had essentially lived with God for 40 days and 40 nights. He didn't just hang out with God for a short time period. He existed and lived with him for over a month, being sustained only by God's presence. Now, God had appeared to many people in the Old Testament before, such as Noah, Abraham, Sarah and Hagar, but never only for short interactions, never for something as long as this. Nothing like a whole 40 days and 40 nights on top of a mountain. So what must that be like? to be in the presence, the almighty presence of God for that long a time, so intensely. Well, Moses spent such an intimate and prolonged time with God that the glory of God actually rubbed off on him to the point where his face shone with God's glory. He picked up some of that manifest glory of God and he carried it with him back to the Israelites. He was carrying the credentials and effect of God's presence in the form of radiance. Now, Moses was not aware that his face was radiant. Why would he be? The glory of his face must be absolutely nothing compared with being completely immersed in the glory and literal presence of the Lord for such a long time. But why would Moses then want to veil the glory of God from his fellow Israelites? Why would he go on to hide the effect that God has had on him? Before we go any further, pause this video and talk through some questions. And I'll see you in a few minutes. Welcome back. So we've been looking back at a snapshot of the situation back in that time frame. And if you're going to look back at the Old Testament, if you want to glean more information from a passage, you need to look not only with context, but also we have the benefit of being able to look with hindsight through the lens of Jesus and what Jesus has done for us on the cross. So in 2 Corinthians, which you have just read, Paul states that Moses put a veil over his face to keep the Israelites from gazing at it whilst the radiance was fading away to hide the temporary nature of this glory resulting from communion with God. Each time Moses would be in the presence of the Lord, his face would once again radiate God's glory. But according to Paul, it was sadly temporary. Now, this is reminiscent of the Old Testament truth that no matter how much blood was spilt sacrificially on the altars to sanctify the Israelites of sin, it never lasted. There would always be that separation of the sinfulness of man and the holiness of God. And so repeated sacrifices were needed over and over again until Jesus came. So we know, thank goodness, that Jesus paid the ultimate price with his perfect blood to redeem us to right relationship with God once and for all. This right relationship standing means the veil is gone. The curtain that separated the holy section of the temple from the most holiest of holies is torn asunder. And we can now not only boldly approach the throne of the Most High God with confidence, as it says in Hebrews, but we are in direct relationship with God. His spirit lives with us and we are part of his family. And yet, how do we get that radiance that Moses had? How do we have a heart and a character that shines with God's glory and goodness? We need to hang out with him. We do need to read his word and hang out with other Christians, but at the end of the day, it is relationship and time with him that is going to leave its mark on us. You could read the whole Bible and listen to every sermon and expound theology until you're blue in the face, which is great, but is that enough to change your personal relationship with God? Are you going to know him more because of that? Okay, when I met Luke online, <clears throat> I read his profile to get a brief overview about this guy I was going to meet up with. But to actually get to know and understand him, it took repeated times of hanging out, of talking, of texting, communicating, of doing activities together to learn what he was like and what his heart and character were. 
And then, of course, once we were married, I continued to learn more about him. But being married and living together caused and still causes us to have an even more influence on each other and to rub off on each other without you even realising because we are in each other's presence for so much longer and interact so much more. So Moses shone with God's glory, and yet it was temporary. And all he brought to the world was that still very good written law that although being guidelines for good living actually did just serve to show how limited our human efforts with regards to dealing with sin were going to be and how we would always fall short without God's grace and Jesus' sacrifice. So how much more can we shine with the glory of God as children of God, with the living law of love living and breathing within us constantly? Not necessarily shining with a face that's, uh, you know, radiant with light, but with a character and heart and actions and deeds and words that are full of God's grace and love and mercy. The God who lives in us and beside us and is in direct communion with our purchased souls at all times, not just for 40 days and nights on a mountaintop. How much greater is this glory of God that we can show the world by our kind actions and our loving deeds? And how much more enduring is this glory? For it is the eternal Holy Spirit dwelling within, not just a list of laws made on tablets of breakable stone. So how is your relationship with God? How do you spend time with him? Not about him, but with him. Do you take the time to listen or do you just talk? Do you ask him his opinion on something or do you just ask him to help you to do the thing that you were going to do your way anyway? Do you ask him to fix the mess you've made or or do you ask him to teach you how not to make the mess next time? Listen and learn and pay attention. The difference between us and the people of the Old Testament is that they did not have the access to God like we do. They could pick up the phone and they could call him, they could pray to him, but they couldn't dwell with him, nor he would they, because of sin. The glory of God faded from Moses' face, but marvel and wonder at the fact that we are living temples of the living God, constantly carrying around his glory and presence in the form of the Holy Spirit at all times. God is always accessible to us. Jesus made a way. But are we making the most of that? Worship God and commune with him. Hang out with him. Wonder at this incredible, honoured, intimate relationship that we get to have with him. Let God rub off on you. And, like with Moses, let people see that radiance in you and wonder.